Hello, happy Friday. I hope your day is going well. I wanted to come on today and talk about energy levels. Do you have low energy levels? Is this something that you are currently struggling with? Is your energy getting worse? Do you feel like you're getting more and more tired? Do you feel like you're having more and more fatigue? A lot of my clients struggle with low energy when we start working together. I really struggled with low energy for quite a long time um, because of emotional eating and over-exercising and over-stimulating my body with too much movement and over-booking my schedule and hormone imbalances and gut issues and vitamin and mineral deficiencies that I didn't know about over, you know, pushing myself and, and the body, the body, our bodies are so wise and our bodies are not robots. And whilst we can intellectually push ourselves and know we're capable of anything, the bodies only have so much capacity, especially if we don't have any balance um, or we have a low level of balance. So do you have low energy levels? I'm so curious to hear, share in the comments. If you have any questions about low energy, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will be happy to um, ask, answer them as I go through this live. Uh, and or if you wanna have a conversation in the DMs, you're more than welcome to message me. So let's dive in. Why potentially are your energy levels low? First of all, let me just say, low energy is not normal. And you don't have lower energy because of your age. To me, that is false. That is a false construct that's planted into our subconscious mind. And it's just not true. I've had clients all the way from 20s up into the 70s. And even my clients in their 70s, as they balance their hormones and, and gut health and build a mindful relationship with food in their body, they have better energy than they have in years and years and years. The body's always trying to heal. It's just that we're innocently getting in the way. So the whole age thing to me is not true. It's all about addressing why are the energy levels low from a root. So the first thing that can contribute to low energy levels, poor sleep. So if we are not sleeping well, we're getting to bed too late, we're waking multiple times through the night for whatever the reasons are, and we're not getting enough sleep, of course this is going to impact our energy levels. Um, when we don't get enough sleep, we end up in more of a stress response. We produce more cortisol, and when that ends up happening, your body's in more of a fight or flight stress response mode. Um, so it's so important that we work on ensuring that we're getting enough sleep. I usually suggest at least eight hours for my clients because a lot of them are balancing hormones um, and that often you know we want to be resting more I it's different for everybody but you know getting a good night's sleep is so important ideally in a sleep before 11 p.m. is optimal hormone balance time happens between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. so for awake during that window it can really interfere with hormone regulation and balance um, uh, you may also feel more puffy like you're retaining more water um, when you're not getting enough sleep and or awake during that window so important for hormone imbalance so one of the biggest reasons that I see low energy is really tied to hormone imbalances and vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So if you have low iron, or maybe you have good iron, but it's actually your ferritin that's low, which is a component of converting into iron. Maybe your vitamin B12 is low, and, and vitamin B12 is the energy vitamin. And so if we're really deficient in that, energy levels can be low. So it could be that you have low vitamin B12 and low iron, and both of those are contributing to your low energy. From a hormone perspective, what I see in most of my clients and what I experienced myself um, through emotional eating, through too much stress, through then under eating and dieting and restriction and lots of negative self-talk um, is that we end up in a really elevated stress response and that's that cortisol. Cortisol is our fight or flight stress hormone. And so when we're in heightened levels of stress, we're not sleeping well, you're likely gonna have potentially a higher level of cortisol or a low level of cortisol, and this kind of gets us in, into adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. And so the more we keep pushing, um, the more we overexert ourselves, overstimulate ourselves with things like too much caffeine, too much intensive exercise, especially in the morning. If you have really high cortisol in the morning, you're better off to do movement later in the uh, afternoon, um, just because otherwise, when you move, you exert your cortisol up and when it's really high already, you wanna to try to bring that down and move stimulation to different parts of the day. Um, so if your cortisol gets really high or usually there's a period of time where it will go really high, the body will get tired of producing it at such an elevated level because it's not normal to do so for more than 
you know, a few minutes really. Like we're supposed to see the bear react and run away. Um, we're not supposed to be in this fight or flight response all the time. And so when we are on a regular basis, um, the body gets depleted of producing cortisol and then it can drop too low. Uh, and so the most common sign of cortisol imbalance, the adrenal fatigue picture is low energy, like really low energy. You could sleep as many hours in the night as you desire and you don't wake feeling rested. You're exhausted or very fatigued all day. Um, you might have an afternoon energy lull that's a very prominent. Um, as well, you have brain fog likely, your memory isn't as sharp, you just, you're kind of in a bit more of an I don't care mentality, it's just like I'm tired, why am I so tired? Your mood just probably doesn't feel as good, you don't feel like yourself because let's face it, if our energy is constantly low, it's really hard to feel like ourselves and to function the way that we want to. And so low energy is heavily tied to this cortisol imbalance from stress, emotional eating, restriction. Um, people who go on really low carbohydrate diets actually can fuel this fatigue sometimes because carbs give us energy, fruits and vegetables, things like that. And so when we really restrict those, especially in the morning, it can really exhaust us because fat and protein takes more energy to break down. And so if we're already tired, you may notice you eat meals and feel even more tired afterward. And so this is where it's always good to get your hormones tested because if you have some of these imbalances and you're trying to go on a certain diet to fix things, you can actually kind of throw innocently things more off than help. Um, so cortisol is a big one uh, and it can be balanced. I do it all the time and I can speak for myself because when my cortisol was at its peak, it was like 1600 and it should be around like 350 so I definitely went through the massive adrenal fatigue and was very tired in my mid-20s um, through overcoming binge eating and kind of like diet addiction and all that stuff it really played a toll on the body but it's good now the thyroid can also really impact our energy levels so if you have underactive thyroid um, this is a very common sign of that especially low energy in the morning it may slowly improve a little bit through the rest of the day but it won't if you have underactive thyroid and a adrenal fatigue issue so this is where it's always important to thoroughly look at hormones and if you've been going to see um, you know your doctor or you're going to work with someone and they're like oh you're fine it's not there's nothing here everything looks good it must be in your head or it must be just be stress I encourage you to keep digging and get multiple opinions and, and maybe try someone else or do different testing just because if you're having these symptoms, something is going on. There's always something going on. It is not just in your head and it's not normal and it's not something for you to accept. So please champion for yourself. I'm always championing for my clients and personally did when I had different symptoms that you know, certain healthcare practitioners were just not looking at as thoroughly as I wanted to. And so we've got to trust that intuition and trust that gut and keep digging until we get the answers that we need. So with the thyroid, what's so interesting and the connection that I see is the longer the cortisol is high, um, the adrenal glands which produce the cortisol start to get depleted. And so then we steal other hormones to convert into cortisol to keep us in that fight or flight function. So thyroid hormones are commonly taken and convert it and then we can end up with a more underactive thyroid. Um, if you have high stress and you're constantly tired and you're eating lots of inflammatory foods and you're struggling with emotional eating, um, poor gut health, all of these things can really suppress the thyroid as well and contribute to the low energy. Another very common sign of underactive thyroid and cortisol imbalance is weight gain, especially in the abdominal area or troubles losing weight. So these things can definitely come along with that as well. So underactive thyroid is a very common, like 90% of the female population, especially in North America, has some level of this. I had this when I was overcoming emotional eating and I actually cut out a lot of carbohydrates to try and balance my gut, which actually I shouldn't have done because it messed up my cortisol and made me more exhausted. It actually threw my thyroid underactive and it gave me estrogen dominance. So I don't suggest just trying things this was before i was like educated i was just like i just really want to balance my gut so definitely do your you know educate yourself and or you know try to work with somebody you know that can help you address these root issues because it's usually not one thing only there's usually multiple things mentally physically emotionally and energetically that can always be contributing to low energy levels and so I think we're taught that it's just like you got to find the one thing and it's usually just not one thing. 
Um, so thyroid cortisol. Um, uh, I haven't, Manny, I haven't shared specific tests to get yet. Um, though I can tell you iron, ferritin, vitamin B12, cortisol, and thyroid would be really good things to start with. The thing is, though, I find is a lot of people will not test these things. They will not put it on the rack. And so it's so important that you can find someone that is going to help you do all this testing. Um, I know for me, when I work with my clients, I have um, different people who will support me in getting them what they need, who can write requisitions and, and are different kinds of doctors and things like that. So, um, because that's super important for me to be able to, um, you know, provide my clients with the recommendations that are going to best support their health and well-being. So those are tests to definitely start with. And if your current healthcare practitioner won't do them, then maybe you want to try someone else and, or, um, you know, really say I'm really tired like I, this is something that's significantly impacting my day can you please help me and, and do these tests so we can see what's going on um, other hormone imbalances that can contribute are low DHEA and I'm not going to try and pronounce the big name but it's also produced by the adrenal glands and if those levels are also low um, we can feel more tired and have more brain fog as well if we have low progesterone for women that can contribute to more fatigue um, so that's another one I often find, you know, women are struggling with. Um, for men, it could be that more low testosterone could also be a sign of that. So it's always good to do those kinds of things. You are welcome, Manny. Hopefully that helps. Um, so hormones is a big part of this, but it's not just hormones. Then we go to digestion. And so it's like chicken or the egg, which one goes out of whack first, the hormones or the digestive system? Well, it could be either or, and it really depends on a lot of things. Did you have to take a lot of antibiotics from being a baby or a child growing up? If so, it likely could be that your um, gut flora was largely negatively impacted from all the antibiotics. Likely, a lot of us are not taught to go on probiotics at a young age, and it's okay. It's no one's fault. But if we have to take a lot of antibiotics, it kills all the good and bad bacteria in the large intestine, and I can attest to this. I had to take a lot of antibiotics as a child got a lot of UTIs um, and so obviously I didn't know that the unhealthy bacteria takes over and if you're eating lots of processed refined sugars and processed carbohydrates um, and then later on after you know so going to college drinking more alcohol like all of that feeds the unhealthy bacteria and then it just grows and grows and grows and so it's called candida or yeast um, and a ton of the population has this and it's usually largely overlooked but it is a huge part of energy levels. So when you have this unhealthy gut balance or this yeast or candida, a very common sign of that is really low energy, brain fog, feeling puffy, feeling more inflammation, your lower abdominal especially feels more bloated or you know your pants feel like they're fitting tighter but this heavily contributes to low energy because these bacteria you know are supposed to produce a lot of our B vitamins and B vitamins are the energy vitamins. We literally have this whole microbiome of bacteria and it's supposed to be about 80%, 90% healthy and then, you know, the balance of a little bit of unhealthy to, to have this, you know, kind of synchronistic environment in our gut and it's about, you know, seven to eight pounds of these bacteria, like hundreds of different kinds and so if it's mostly the unhealthy that is, um, you know, populating, of course it's going to impact all of our systems. It impacts our hormones, it impacts our nervous system, our immune systems, our mood, our, our brain function, all of these different things. And I had horrible candida in my early 20s from antibiotic use, from binge eating and binging on a lot of sugar. Um, and so for me, you know, it, it took some time to really regulate it out. And it takes addressing things like binge eating and emotional eating first because those things can also really lower energy if you're eating, you know, overeating or eating excessive amounts of foods because it's you have to expend a lot of energy to break that down and it's really hard on the body to overeat. It causes a lot of digestive issues. It stresses out our hormones, um, inflammation, right? And then there's all the guilt and shame and the negative emotions that come along with that as well. Um, so addressing emotional eating is actually one of the first parts if you're struggling with that that is important to deal with um, and then going into more of the hormones and the gut health because if you don't deal with that first you can take all the vitamins in the world and try and eat as good as you want but you won't reap the like permanent 
freedom results if you don't address the self-sabotage with food. Um, and it's not about restriction either. So we just want to make sure that we, we find that happy medium for us. Um, so gut flora is really important to reestablish a healthy balance of because it has a very um, direct impact on our energy levels and every single person whom I've worked with in the last eight years, and that's a thousands of women have had gut flora imbalances um if you're having like constipation or sluggish sluggish bowels or you're you know having loose stools this could be another sign of gut flora imbalances um you know feeling like you're becoming more sensitive to more foods inflammation skin breakouts especially around the the chin area here this is prime intestinal you know gut flora imbalance uh, area um, so if you're finding you're having a lot of breakouts around there that's usually probably tied to the gut flora imbalance as well so it's another reason why we end up with low energy this is a big one so a lot of people go on detoxes it can become a bandwagon yes you know it's like i want to detox my liver and be healthier i want to detox my gut flora and be healthier and yes you know we want to support our liver and make sure we can detox properly because it's a very important detoxification organ we want to balance our gut flora and have that you know healthy microbiome however a lot of cleanses and suggestions to help detox are too intensive for what our bodies can handle and if you've never detoxed before and you just buy a kit or you just start doing something without knowing what's going on with your body it can actually be too invasive and that can make your energy really low. So I find for people who try to liver detox too fast or do too many liver supports, like they're doing milk thistle, they're doing chlorophyll, they're doing chlorella, they're doing green juice, they're right taking like seven liver support supplements and then like, you know, green juice and dandelion tea and lemon, like those are all great things. However, maybe too much because if you start doing that and you get nauseous and you feel extremely exhausted it means you're releasing too many toxins at once and your body can't keep up with the level of which it, it you know flushes it out of the body because all this has to filter through the liver the kidney and urinary system right like there's a lot that has to happen and so we can end up with really low energy if we try to detox too intensively and too quickly. Same with gut flora, if we go on too intensive of a protocol to balance it out too quickly, you can get really fatigued and really tired and you can also get some flu-like symptoms and nausea and it can actually feel kind of scary. And so easy does it, baby steps with things like that to prevent having what are like die off and detox symptoms that contribute to low energy. So take your time if you are doing something like that and. If you keep trying but you're not you know gaining the results you want i do suggest maybe that you go and consult with someone and maybe work with someone to help you with that because when i'm helping a client balance their liver or balance their gut flora we're going slowly and we're really looking at their hormone health their gut health their mindset relationship with food because all of that plays a role in how the body is going to successfully or not successfully detox um, if you have really irregular blood sugar, that can impact your energy levels. If you're not eating regularly through the day, if you're missing fats or you're missing proteins or you're missing vital nutrients in your meals or snacks, your blood sugar will just like spike and drop drop in bigger peaks and valleys if you're eating a lot of processed sugar, aspartame, um, you know white flowers and white foods that are very you know not rich in nutrients just it's a bigger spike and drop for the blood sugar you're consuming more caffeine you're stimulating your body more you know as you do that your cortisol goes up and the higher the cortisol the bigger and smaller the blood sugar spikes and drops and so we really want to look at okay are you skipping meals are you eating on the run are you eating empty calorie foods are you getting enough protein and fat like these are things you can start to look at because if you're finding you know after an hour your blood sugar is crashing and you're hangry and you're irritable and you're lightheaded and your energy is dropping that is a potential you know definite sign that you could have irregular blood sugar however it can be balanced out just like the rest of these things as we know poor food choices eating a lot of processed foods a lot of aspartame fast foods refined sugars for a lot of people wheat and dairy products um you know these kinds of things can make us really fatigued because when we're eating something that has a lot of processed ingredients or ingredients that are made in a lab that we can't pronounce um you have to think of like your body going okay well what am i supposed to do with this i don't recognize this i don't know what this is 
in fact, like, I think it's a foreign invader, so I'm going to attack it and try and get it out of the body. Um, and so it takes a lot of energy to do that, to try and break down a food that's not really from nature and then to, to get it out of the body because your body now sees it as a threat. So food sensitivities can make us tired. You know, eating a lot of processed foods because of what I've just explained and so part of it is to look at cravings and look at any kinds of food addictions that may be going on and address those things um, and overcome them so that you you will see a significant improvement in your energy levels as you improve the nutrient content of your food. It's not about perfection eating, it's about finding a balance that works for you and also allowing still for mindful indulgence at the same time that we want to nourish our bodies because our bodies are these beautiful vessels that we get to live in and they need nourishment, they need hydration, they need nurturing. It'd be like putting a sand in a Ferrari, you wouldn't do that, it wouldn't, you'd wreck the car. So we need to be mindful, you know, of, of what we're putting in our bodies because it really does impact our energy levels. Not eating enough can make us tired because we're not getting the fuel that we need. Of course, eating too much um, can really make us tired because now we have to expend all this energy to break down excess food that the body really wasn't ready for. High stress levels, of course, can make us fatigued. If you have a really high, you know, performance job or you skip your lunch break, you don't do any kinds of self-care, you're a people pleaser. People pleasing and perfectionist mindsets definitely, you know, can create low energy because you're giving to everyone else and likely not to yourself. You're saying yes to everyone else and no to yourself. And usually innocently what happens is we end up at the bottom of our priority list. We end up fatigued, tired. We end up not well because we're from a place of unworthiness going, well, I've got to prove my worth. I've got to show everyone I'm good enough. So I'm going to people please and overgive to everyone else so that they can, you know, give me validation that I'm good enough. And then, you know, you have nothing left for yourself and you, and you get so depleted. And if we're so busy giving to everyone else, do we really have time to do good food prep and make good food choices? Are you taking time to do self-care? Are you taking time for mindful movement, getting enough sleep, disconnecting from technology, having fun? Like, are you able to do those things if your schedule is overbooked and you have no white space for yourself? So that's why it's so important for us to look at our insecurities and what makes us feel unworthy because that plays a huge role in low energy because you're just go, 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 going all the time and it gets exhausting. Um, so it's okay if you're a people pleaser, you have a perfectionist mindset and it's great to actually do the mindset work to be free of those things and fill the void and learn how to love yourself and accept yourself so you can validate yourself and know that your worth is within you. And yes, others can still compliment you. However, you don't need to chase chase your worthiness outside of yourself and put it in other people, um, you know, dictating whether you have it or not. So that is really important to deal with. Um, low water intake. So if you're not drinking enough water, energy levels likely are going to be a lot lower than they, you know, need to be. Um, if I have clients who only drink a glass or two a day, when we start working together, they have very low energy. And as they improve their hydration, they are like shocked at how much it improves your energy levels. Like you need, we're like 70% water. We need hydration. It's such an important part of supporting our energy levels. Um, and if you are the kind of person who needs to survive off caffeine all day because you're exhausted, the caffeine may temporarily stimulate you, but then it exhausts us because it's such a false fight or flight and it usually then makes us even more tired because the caffeine makes our blood sugar spike and crash and we just end up more and more tired. So be aware of if you're using caffeine to give you um, you know, a false energy feeling, definitely would encourage you to address you know, and dig into the root issues of why you're, you're having low energy issues so that you don't need to rely on caffeine. It's different if it's a ritual and you have good energy, like I just really enjoy a cup of coffee in the morning. That's fine, but if you're having multiple you know, consumptions of caffeine through the day to function, we really wanna look at what may be going on. So do you struggle with low energy? I'm going to go more into the like mental emotional reasons why, you know, I find a lot of women with low energy, men too. Um, so I've kind of mentioned the people pleasing and the perfectionism. And if we're go, go, going all the time and our schedules are overbooked and we're not taking time for ourselves, 
our energy levels just do deplete over time because it really impacts our hormones. That cortisol that I was talking about earlier, it really impacts that. It can impact the thyroid. It can deplete our vitamins and minerals that are also part of our energy levels. So it's so important to try to slowly bring in balance to our schedule, slowly bring in self-care. Um, you know, look ahead at the week ahead and go, okay, is this manageable or am I looking at this and I want to cry at my schedule because I know it's too much and I'm already overwhelmed, right? Like these are the kinds of things that are really important for us to consider because our bodies are not robots. Our bodies are these beautiful vessels that we live in and they need nurturing and care and the better care we take of them, the better we feel, the better our quality of life. Um, another aspect of low energy is more to do with the energetics and it's really around if you feel like you're sensitive to energy are you an empath and what is an empath well it's someone who can feel a lot of what's going on around them they may take on other people's emotions and energy you're very sensitive to energy you can maybe even feel the collective energy and what's going on outside in the world even though you're like in your house focusing on your own things and so um, I'm an empath I'm very sensitive to energy it is a gift once you learn how to manage it and the same time I can feel a lot of stuff I can feel the collective out in the world I can feel you know when I have a friend or a family member who is going through something emotional I can feel my client stuff however I've learned how to manage it because what ends up happening is if we as an empath or someone who's sensitive to energy doesn't know how to manage it and have compassion for the person who is upset but not take it on we end up taking on their overwhelm their anger their sadness their fear their worry and then it drains us and it can really make us feel exhausted and depleted with our energy levels. And so if you're an empath, it is a gift. Like I said, it's just learning how to manage it. It's learning how to set healthy boundaries with your energy. It's learning a good energy hygiene routine where you, you know, use different techniques like saging or clearing energy or, um, you know, a salt bath with pink or gray salt that clears your field. Um, certain crystals are really great for energy like black obsidian black quartz rose quartz things like that and so when we can learn how to lovingly manage our energy it really does have a positive impact on being able to be an empath and embrace that part of you and we don't have to take on other people's stuff like when I feel the collective energy out in the world I just go you know what that's not mine so I'm going to give it back to the collective and I'm going to you know clear my field because I'm not it's not my responsibility to take on, you know, the energy of the entire collective. That's not mine. So it's just declaring that and having that boundary. Um, and then there's a lot of different, you know, energetic, like the, the moon cycle can really impact our energy levels, full moons to new moons, um, you know, certain eclipses and retrogrades can impact our energy if you're attuned to those kinds of things. And there's also something called the Schumann resonance and the Schumann resonance really measures like almost I call it the heartbeat of the earth and so sometimes there's a lot of new energy coming onto the earth and it can really make people feel tired especially if you're sensitive to energy um, and then there's certain days where your energy just may feel through the roof like you've drank five cups of coffee because of energetic shifting that's going on on the earth so all of these things from a spiritual energetic to a mental emotional to a physical level can impact our energy levels it's usually not just one thing it's usually a layer of a few or multiple things that are contributing to our low energy so if you've been watching today share with me something in the comments that you've learned if you have any questions before i wrap up feel free to ask them in the comments um, if you want to have a conversation in the dms about exploring low energy levels and exploring why they may be low for you and you're looking to you know gain some one-on-one -on -one support i'm happy to have a conversation with you on what that looks like and how i support my clients is this is something that i support women with every day i went through really low energy levels because of binge eating and food addiction and too much overstimulation from using exercises punishment instead of knowing what mindful movement was um, I was really hard on my body and it took me about five years to balance my hormones in my digestive system because I was in a really intensive cycle of food addiction for a few years that was really 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 intensive um, it doesn't take that long necessarily when you're working on balancing these things it just took me that long because I was teaching myself and learning and then got educated and now it's easy because I've obviously helped a lot of people with it so 
never fear it doesn't need to take that long however it's so important to dig and to keep looking at why the energy levels are low and that you ideally don't stop digging until you get your answers and you get the support that you desire to have really good energy levels where we're not meant to have low energy levels i cannot stress that enough it is not normal and we shouldn't accept low energy as normal brain fog is as normal poor memory as normal pms symptoms as normal you know like it's just not and it's just the body is trying to speak to us and get our attention and say hey i love you and i want to show you with this low energy or this weight gain or this brain fog or the skin breakout or these pms symptoms that there's some imbalances going on inside and I want to teach you about them and I want you to understand why they're going on and we're going to work together to heal and to balance and then you're going to feel better than you ever have before. You're going to be more in tune with me and we're going to have a, a deeper connection, right? That's the power of the body. Our bodies are so wise and our bodies are always wanting to teach us the wisdom that they have. There's just endless amounts of it. I'm always learning like, my hormones are pretty balanced now, and I, but I still get them tested every year to ensure that everything is good, and if something kind of goes a little bit off, well, then I, I rebalance it and we move forward, right? So it's, it is about the understanding our hormones and understanding our digestive systems, our blood sugar, um, our sleep, our hydration levels, the foods we're putting in our body, our stress levels, our mindset, how that dictates our energy levels, and, and this empath, this energetic aspect of this it's all connected so i hope you have enjoyed this live today i'm going to be posting it in my feed so you can re-watch it if you've missed any of it if anyone has any questions on low energy you can ask them here before i wrap up in the next couple of moments otherwise we all deserve to have really good energy we should have consistent energy through the day ideally optimal energy as you wake up your body wakes up, you know, within five to 10 minutes, you're at a, a really good energy level. You start drinking water, you have breakfast, right? Energy levels keep increasing as the day goes on. Actually, one other thing I want to mention that I forgot, a lot of my clients who skip breakfast end up with really low energy levels and it's because they're not giving themselves the fuel and the nutrients to help support optimal energy through the day. So I always encourage to eat breakfast and not skip it. Um, and that's just because all of my clients are dealing with some kind of emotional relationship with food and I don't recommend fasting or skipping meals. If you have a good relationship with food and, and that's what works for you, great. But if there's hormone imbalances going on and, and metabolism issues and you know, um, you're, you're tired, you likely need the fuel in the morning. So I definitely do encourage you to eat breakfast and make sure that you're nourishing your body because our bodies do need fuel to function the way that we desire for them to. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this today. Thank you for tuning in and being here with me. Um, if you are wanting to connect and talk more about your health goals, your struggles, your relationship with food, energy levels, potentially exploring hormone and gut imbalances and whatever else may be going on for you, you can click the link in my bio to apply to work with me. You fill out an intake form. There is a fee for the body freedom session and then you can pick your time. And then we can talk through all of those things and I can answer your questions and we can talk more about private coaching. And if you do sign up, that fee is put toward the private coaching program. So it's um, super easy to streamline that and it's all on my website. If you have any questions, you are welcome to DM me and you can also click the link in my bio to listen to the No Sugar Coding podcast, which is my podcast where I talk a lot more about this and all of the things that I've talked about today in depth. There's going to be 300 episodes next week. I can't believe it. So you're so welcome to um, go and check that out as well. So I hope you have a beautiful day, a great weekend, and I will look forward to doing another live with you again very soon.